What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. There's been a lot of discussion and debate about whether or not the iPad is nothing more than a larger iPod Touch or an oversized iPhone. So I thought, let's let you be the judge. We're gonna put the two head to head and you can see if the iPad is right for you. So on the right side, we've got the iPhone 3GS as a contender. And on the left, we've got a 32 gigabyte Wi-Fi only iPad as the other contender. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna cover a lot of topics. We're gonna to have to sort of glance over some nuances here just in the interest of time. Otherwise, this is going to be close to a two hour video. So let's start with the lock screen. On the iPad, you've actually got an icon right there for pictures. If you hit that, it'll start a picture slideshow on your lock screen. Kinda neat. The iPhone, on the other hand, does not have that. It's a feature that could certainly be added uh, with a firmware upgrade. I'll go ahead and unlock that. We'll go ahead and unlock this as well. So let's start with customization. You can do a little bit more customization on the iPad uh, than you can on the iPod Touch. So there's a lot more screen real estate, obviously, on the iPad. Come standard here with four uh, icons on the dock. You can actually add six to those. So I can take an icon, so here's the ABC player, for example. I can drag it down. I can take the Kindle app right here and I can drag that down. Here you're limited to just four. Go ahead and put them back up. So there's one example of customization. Let's go ahead and show you a few more. And it's also a good way to show what the menu systems look like on the iPad. So you take advantage of the screen real estate a little bit more with the iPad. Uh, you get more of a hierarchical menu system. So you can see all the menu options here on the left, whereas on the iPod Touch or the iPhone, you have to scroll through to get to them. So you can determine whether or not that's an important feature to you or not. So let's go ahead and go to, let's say, brightness and wallpaper. So the come standard with a whole bunch of different wallpapers, nothing terribly fancy there. Go ahead and tap it. You can pick all your pictures if you'd like, or you can just uh, pick an image. We'll go ahead and pick that one. You can see all the pictures that you have on your phone, or you can go to wallpapers and pick the ones that are default. So I've got the globe set as mine. And you can pick whether or not you want to set it as a lock screen, set it as a home screen, or set it as both. Uh, right here on the iPhone, the iPod Touch, go to wallpaper, and we pick one so there's the same globe. You can set it just as the background for uh, the lock screen. You can't change the background of the device when you're actually using it. So there's a little bit of example of uh, some customizations that you can do. Again, this is something that can be fixed very easily with a firmware upgrade to the iPod Touch or iPhone. So let's go ahead and look at the native applications that come standard on both. So we'll cover probably some of the, the bigger ones right now. Let's go ahead and jump right into the YouTube player. So here's the YouTube player on the iPad, obviously. And you get sort of a much larger grid. Um, and a lot of these features just take advantage of the additional screen real estate. So today, this week, all uh, featured, top rated, most viewed, and just get, it's a little more, um, Visual, so you can see some of the favorite videos. All your subscriptions sort of come out here on a big list. You can pick the one you want. So I can pick uh, this Pocket Now video. I can go ahead and see what they've done and just click away. Let's go ahead and uh, pick a video. So we'll go to to pick one uh, that I've done. Most Asked Tech Questions, this is one I did a while ago. It actually plays in a little different format here. So you can actually see all the information about the video right below and it'll start to play right in the screen. You just get a little bit more of a native um, viewing experience here and you can full screen it. And of course you can rotate it. And that'll start playing. You don't need to see my mug, so we'll go ahead and done that. Uh, let me show you what the YouTube video and YouTube application looks like on the iPhone and iPod Touch. Um, so we'll use Go ahead and turn on Wi-Fi. I turned on uh, airplane mode because I didn't want to get phone calls while we were using this. It tends to uh, go on and on and on. The only time I get phone calls seems to be when I'm filming videos. So let me show you here what that looks like. I'll go ahead and open up YouTube. See, I was looking for a French bulldog puppy. I was thinking about getting a dog. So you get um, sort of the rows across the bottom and you get much smaller thumbnails. Uh, it's a pretty eloquent way to, to view videos. I watch a lot of YouTube video on here. Uh, but it's smaller and you can take advantage of the larger real estate here on uh, the iPad. I'll go ahead and close this. And let's go next to, how about mobile safari? 
an application that I use quite a bit, I assume you do as well. I did a previous video sort of walking you through mobile Safari on the iPad um, and how it's a little bit different. Let me give you guys just a quick summary here. Let's go ahead and launch this and we'll launch it as well on uh, the iPhone. So you can see we've got Google loaded up here. Um, looks like a standard website as you would find really anywhere. But let me show you the, the speed of the site and how quickly they load uh, on each. Before I do that, let me show you some of the very quick nuances. Um, you've got this bookmarks bar across the top. You can see I've got Techno Buffalo bookmarked right there. So I could go ahead and jump right to that if I wanted. I've got a sort of a 3D-ish effect that comes out. I can look at my different pages. Bookmarks are all contextualized, so you actually get these pop-ups and the menus that sort of show up throughout the iPad. So let's go ahead and check some load speeds. I'll load Techno Buffalo on each of these and we'll see how quickly they work. Now I should mention that this has been loaded on both these devices, so cookies and stuff have been cached. So you can see, make this a representation of how fast um, a page that you visit on a regular basis would load for you. So we'll go ahead and do Techno Buffalo on each. Try to hit them both at the same time. Go right there and right there. And uh, these are both on the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, the iPad's got a one gigahertz chip. It's the A4 chip built just for, it's already done, uh, built just for the iPad. And the iPhone 3GS is about a 600 megahertz chip in it. Um, and that looks like it's almost about done uh, as well. It's actually still loading. So right off the bat, you can see there's definitely a speed difference with the iPad, something that I've certainly noticed all the way through. So browsing here, uh, it was a pretty similar experience. It's very quick, it's fluid, but you can just see so much more content. You can look at the difference here between what you can see on this page and what you can see on the iPhone. It makes it a lot easier to look at content. So pinching and zooming works as you'd expect. YouTube videos we just saw play right inside of the browser here. You can see, just go ahead and hit play. You can full screen it and everything just as we could before. Um, of course, Flash isn't present on either device. Let me show you how YouTube videos play here on the iPhone or iPod Touch. It actually opens up a secondary player. So next, let's hop on over to Mail, because there are a lot of differences here with Mail. This is probably some of the best implementation of using the larger screen real estate. So I'll go ahead and open up Mail, and you can get a glimpse of some of the stuff I'm looking at. Here's a contact form that came through. You can go ahead and see all these messages, get this contextual menu that pops up. You can pick one that you want. So here's a, let's go to, here's a YouTube message. You go ahead and open right to that. Question about the obligatory big knife. And if you rotate it, you actually get a bit more context on the side and you can sort of keep jumping through. So we'll go ahead and pick another one. You can see what it looks like. I'll go ahead and push this back up. Here, you get sort of the same sort of view. You can go ahead and pick emails and open them and view them just as you're probably pretty used to. Again, it's just an implementation of where more screen real estate equals more features. Um, you get a bit more things that you can do just because you have more space to do them. So next, let's check out the iTunes store on each device. So here is the iTunes store on the iPad and it looks very similar to the iTunes store that you are used to on your desktop or laptop computer. Um, it looks very native, and of course, well, because it is native, made by Apple. So you can view and scroll for whatever you want. You can download things over Wi-Fi. You can view movies, uh, TV shows. You can rent them or buy them. And you can go ahead and just scroll through, and it's just very easy and intuitive. Here on the iPhone, we'll go ahead and open up the iTunes. It's very intuitive and easy to use as well, but again, a little bit of a smaller space means you can't do as much, and you can't see as much at once. So you can scroll through pretty easily and the search functions work just the same. So we'll go ahead and migrate out of this and let's jump to the iPod. So here is the iPod and this sort of opens up another iTunes-ish looking thing. And this is sort of another way where it looks a bit more desktop. Now interestingly enough, what's been omitted is cover flow. There really isn't a cover flow functionality um, as far as iTunes is concerned, something that was a big selling point on the first generation iPhone. I remember when the first time I saw it, I was scrolling through, showing everybody how cool I thought it was. Um, not here. So I've got music, podcasts, audiobooks. I only have one playlist I put on here, Green Day. Volume is controlled by upper left-hand corner. You can view songs, artists, albums, genres. Have your genius playlist there in the bottom left. Or if you want to add a playlist, you can go ahead and hit play and it'll play through the speakers on the bottom. 
And of course you can see on the iPad, one of the other differences is that it'll rotate any direction. So I'll hit play here, pulls up a list of songs. If you rotate it, it just rotates. So here's the play looks like, it just opens up. And that's about all it does. I'm not going to play it any longer. I don't want to get into any copyright issues. Um, but you can see how it looks. You get sort of just a big album, um, but no cover flow. So on the iPod here, we'll go ahead and open this up. See, I've got some, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, one of my favorite TV shows. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to uh, songs. And if I turn this, there's that cover flow thing I was talking about that you just don't get with the iPad. So you get all your songs here and go ahead and pick one plays almost exactly the same. Pause is right down below. So that was sort of an overview of some of the standard applications. Let me show you some of the things that the iPad does and can do that the iPhone um, does not do. This is all going to be a very quick overview. I'm going to show you the iBooks application right now. Um, and I'll go more into detail about the iBook and show you how it works, but I just want to give you a general overview. So you can go ahead and open that up. You get a full sort of cool bookshelf looking effect and you can open a book, it comes standard with Winnie the Pooh. And you can go ahead and just read, and of course you can flip your pages just as you would a normal book. And one of the things I should mention that you don't see in the video is how the device feels in your hands. Um, and sort of one of the reasons I'd say if you can get to an Apple Store or Best Buy, go check one out because it's holding it may change your opinion. Uh, I was very skeptical about it. Uh, when I first held it, I saw the utility of it. Um, it became very interesting. Uh, so you can scroll through and read a book. You can actually adjust the brightness right from the application in case you prefer a little lighter or darker. Um, I don't think the glossy screen is going to affect my eyes as opposed to uh, Kindle-like e-ink. Uh, it appears to be pretty solid. So let me go ahead and go back and just show you the store very quickly. The store looks pretty native to what you'd expect, similar to what iTunes looked like. This is sort of the third store uh, that they have here. And you go ahead and pick a book, buy it. Books are about... New releases about thirteen bucks, twelve ninety nine, um, or around there, and you've got a lot of other applications that you just don't have on the iPhone. I think that make it a bit more um, utilitarian. So you've got Pages, for example, and I'll do a full video on Pages. Um, and this is sort of Apple's version of Microsoft Word. You can go ahead and start typing. You can insert images. You've got pretty decent uh, customization options that you see across here insert pictures, there's a spreadsheet application and a presentation application, so like a PowerPoint-esque. So you can actually use this a bit more as a productivity tool. So go ahead and quit out of this, and I'll show you a few more other things. You've got Netflix, for example, which supposedly is coming for uh, the iPhone. It lets you stream Netflix on-demand content right to the device. And another thing that I should mention, the iPad is very, very good for video. Um, really lets you see things almost like you would on a TV, and just because it's the fact that it's larger. Um, so I'll show you another application. Some of the apps are very different and take advantage of larger screen real estate. For example, Twitterific, uh, my Twitter client of choice. Things just look a bit bigger. Uh, not very different than what you find on the iPhone or iPod Touch, just larger. And if you rotate it, like most applications, you get a bit more uh, menu options. So I've got my all my tweets, mentions, messages or favorites. So the things that are really important to me and the things that I was looking for uh, in the iPad was the mobile web experience. I rely on mobile web for quite a bit, um, for work even, for commenting on YouTube videos, for checking out posts on Techno Buffalo, responding to people. And uh, I rely on mail quite a bit. It's how I react and respond to people. So I needed something that could really handle those two things, which are very simple uh, requirements. And I got that plus much more with the iPad. I now have the Pages application where I can actually write up posts and articles. Um, I can watch a video on here. I can watch TV on here. Uh, there are things like the ABC video player, which takes advantage of the HTML5 format. And I can go and stream content directly from ABC's website. I can watch the newest episode of Lost or Modern Family or... Uh, Grey's Anatomy, if that's your thing. Um, not necessarily mine. So there's a lot that you can do with the iPad. And the iPad itself uh, may not seem like much more than a big iPod Touch, but I think the future of the device is going to be in the hands of the developers and what they do with it. I think that, again, I've mentioned this in previous videos, we're really looking at a paradigm shift for how we consume content. So you've got things like 
you know, the Wall Street Journal application, uh, where you can go through and read newspapers and get magazines. And even some books are going to have their own applications. You can get a more immersive environment. So imagine reading a book to your kids. It's a child's book. And you actually go through and see the characters move and come to life. Um, it's just a, a very interesting way to interact with the device. And I think that we're looking at sort of the next generation of mobile computing. And whether or not it's the iPad or another device that sort of takes that crown, uh, there's very little doubt that the iPad is going to change the industry. Uh, it's going to force the competition to evolve and change their business models, much like the iPhone did. So I think in that aspect, whether you love it or hate it, um, it's certainly going to move people forward uh, in the right direction. So again, the last thing I want to talk about is the App Store. It looks about as you'd expect. Almost exactly like the rest of the applications, it looks very native. And the App Store on the iPhone or iPod Touch looks about the same as the other application on the iPhone or iPod Touch. You just get a bit more options here. So guys, this is sort of a tough to say whether or not the iPad's gonna be for you. For what I needed it for and I was looking uh, for, the iPad is perfect. I can sit on the couch, I can write my TV posts, I can view my websites that I need to, I can watch TV or watch movies, take it with me on a plane or a train or an automobile, uh, wherever else you wanna go, and uh, be able to sort of consume all of my media, my books, my TV, movies, uh, online life, and mail, sort of in one application that's a little bit bigger and a little bit larger. And you shouldn't just discount the fact that it's a larger iPod Touch, because uh, the larger screen sizes give you a bit more utility. Um, however, if you're very happy with your iPhone or iPod Touch and you don't see a compelling reason to upgrade, uh, you're probably pretty happy with what you have. Um, again, it comes down to a personal preference. And again, I can't recommend enough going to an Apple store, going to a Best Buy or a retailer near you that sells this and taking a look at it. So once you have it in hand, you may feel that you've got a very different experience with it. So guys, this is John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Stay tuned to the channel and the website uh, for all of your iPad related news. We'll have bigger write-ups on the site for the iPad. If you haven't joined the site, go ahead and join, sign up. You can access our social network and talk to other users. You can create your own tech website, so technobuffalo.com slash whatever. And you can even put in your own ad code and uh, make some money from the site if you'd like. So anyway guys, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.